Greetings all. Welcome to another session here of Tuesday Talks. Today we're going to be investigating the world of second language acquisition. Primarily we're going to be using uh, as our reference and a guide a textbook entitled uh, Introducing Second Language Acquisition. And that's by Muriel Seville Troika. You'll be able to find her book probably anywhere uh, like at Amazon or Barnes & Noble, that type of thing. So let's just jump into this whole concept of SLA, second language acquisition and we'll look a little bit at just a quick intro for this small uh, uh, for this small little lecture first of all what is second language acquisition SLA um, the, the term basically is referring to the ability to acquire an additional language beyond the first language uh, it can be an individual who is doing this it could be a group who's doing this a second language is different from a first language first language you uh, acquire when you're um, still an infant, uh, as you go into your three, fours, and five uh, years of age. Uh, second language is generally something that you acquire after you have your first language. It's also called uh, a target language, that language that you're trying to attain. Um, now, as we begin to look at this in this little series that's going to go on here, we need to be uh, considering a number of things. For example, a second language learner, what do they come to know? Uh, what is it that they begin to acquire, not just the knowledge of the language, but what are the other things that they, they've come to learn and understand? Do they know the, the logistics of language, or do they just know, uh, you know how to communicate with it? Uh, for uh, first language learners, uh, there are many people who do not know the logistics of language because they uh, don't study it. Now, if they were to actually consider it and think about it and think about language, they may be able to say, oh, yeah, I know this is true or I know that is true. That's what linguists do. Um, but what is it that the second language learner, you know, comes to know? And how does he get this knowledge? Is this knowledge just given through what I would term osmosis, uh, which just basically means you're in the environment and you you interact with people in the environment and you learn the language that way, kind of like the way you learn a first language? Or is it more uh, the other end of the continuum where you study a book and you learn the grammar and the, uh, the lexicon and then you can uh, go and communicate? Most likely, some, uh, linguists are going to say it's somewhere in the middle where you have a little bit of environment and you have a little bit of, of uh, logistical learning, um, and so it's going to be there in the middle. But what's the answer to that? No one, no one really knows. No one really knows the answer to the first question that I have here either. The last question that I have listed here, what are some, uh, why are some learners more successful than others? And there's been a lot of debate and research into that as well, that they have better learning strategies or they're more motivated or a lot of different reasons for that possibility. Anyway, those are questions that we want to investigate when we're looking at this whole field of study called second language acquisition. To be honest, these are some of the areas that researchers get involved in. So uh, let's take a more uh, detailed look here at second language acquisition. It is a relatively new field of study, and the reason why it's relatively new is because it's an amalgamation of a variety of fields of study that also happen to be looking at language. So, for example, we have linguistics, and these are the people who look at the nuts and bolts of things. They, they look at the, ling the logistics of it all. They look at the syntax and the phonology and the morphology. Uh, they look at not only uh, one's list linguistic competence, what do I know about language, but they also look at linguistic performance, what can I do with it. Uh, and so you have that whole field of study. You also have psychologists who also study linguistics. Well, these people, you know, who specialize in, in language have come to be known as psycholinguistics. They're interested to know what's going on inside the brain. Okay, and I'm sorry, not inside the brain. They're interested in knowing what's going on inside the mind, how the mind operates, how the mind works in um, acquiring a second language. There's one that I didn't add here, but that would be neurolinguists. They're actually interested in what's going on in the brain. How are the synapses firing? How do they learn a new language? What are the procedures that the actual neurons are making? Uh, to acquire a second language. That's an, another whole field. You have sociolinguistics, and these are people who are interested in the varieties of language that go on with regard to the variety of registers, if you're speaking to someone that's uh, above you or below you, or, or the in cultural environments that you may be in. 
Um, that would be like the social psycho psychologists, uh, psycholinguists who are interested in the group think. Uh, they're interested in how you use language in a group or how different groups use language. And so you have all these different parts, okay? It's kind of like a little picture that I have here where you've got all the blind people touching one. They'll say, well, it's this or it's that or it's this. And really, when you want to look at a theory of second language acquisition, you need to integrate all these ideas because they all come from a certain perspective and they probably all have their own unique uh, perspective. The second language acquisition theorist though, needs to step back and try to look at all of these components to see how well... Uh, to see how they all fit together into a theory of second language acquisition. All right, so there are some differences in meaning with regard to some of the words here uh, that are described. We have uh, basically second language learning. Second language learning, again, is different from first language. Generally, you learn the first and then you learn the second. Sometimes you have two learning two languages at the same, same time. It's what... Uh, uh, Troika would call uh, simultaneous uh, language learning. We're generally talking about sequential. You learn the first and you learn the second. So you've got this sequence of things going on. Uh, you, you may be learning uh, not a second language, but a foreign language. A second language is essentially you're using a language to actually use it in everyday life because you live in that culture or uh, because you work in that culture. Um, so you have to know that second language. A foreign language is I'm learning a language about a, uh, I'm learning a language that isn't in my country. I'm learning a language because I find it interesting or because it's a requirement or because uh, maybe someday I want to go there. Um, but I'm not going to be living that language. Okay, so it's a foreign language, something that I will study somewhere else. Um, most of your college students who are studying a uh, language are studying a foreign language. Uh, and even though they may be studying Spanish or French or German or whatever language they're studying, in their own little world, in, uh, they're not... Uh, uh, they're not planning on or not considering using that language anywhere else. Well, there are some that do. They jump in and they live. You know, they're, they're, uh, they're French and they decide they want to go live in Spain for 10 years. Well, they're going to learn a second language in that case. It's not going to be a foreign language. There are other people have a library language, and that's basically, hey, uh, I need to do investigations, I need to do research, and therefore I'm going to jump in and I'm going to study another language so that I can investigate in that other language. It's interesting to note that about 85, I think it's 85 percent of all written material anywhere in the world, regardless of language, is translated or in English. Um, so those of you who are out there who are watching this video and thinking, hmm, I should learn a language. The one you want to learn for library research is probably the first one would be English because so much material uh, is already translated into English. Lastly, you might have an auxiliary language. I, you know, I, I work at a company or I'm trying to sell a product, and the only thing I want to know is how to sell this product in Farsi. Uh, so I study Farsi, but I'm only studying enough to sell this particular product. Um, and so that would be an auxiliary type of language where you have a specialized thing that you want to do. English for specific purposes is what uh, ESP is all about. E, uh, and that would be a type of auxiliary language. Many different kinds of second languages going on here. Okay, what's a first language? Well, there are a variety of names here that we have for them. Uh, we have first language or mother tongue or primary language. Uh, again, some people learning two languages at the same time, they might have simultaneous multilingualism. And there are people in the U.S. Uh, in particular that I know, actually Europe as well, where they deliberately have a nanny or they have someone living in the house who speaks another language. So the child children can learn more than one language at the same time. Again, uh, sequential multilingualism is basically second language acquisition. But the first language is the language that one learns as uh, from, from birth. Uh, it's the language that you hear people talk around you. It's the, la it's the first language that you acquire <clears throat> um, by, you know, probably by the time you're about age five. And that's all for this little introduction. I realize it's a small, small segment here, but we're going to move on to looking at some of the foundations of second language acquisition in the subsequent videos. I do hope you've enjoyed this. If you do have any questions, kindly give me a holler. Talk